Okay, so today we're going to be talking about the air intake system. We also have two other systems that kind of tie into the air intake system, and that is the EVAP system in the green and the PCV system in the green. Also, the air intake system eventually just leads into the engine. We're not going to be going too in depth about these other systems in this video, just the air intake, but if you'd like to understand some of these other systems and how they tie into uh, making your car go, uh, head down into the description and check out the links. So with the air intake system, there's four major components. First the air filter, next the mast airflow sensor throttle body and then the air intake manifold. Now I'll be showing this in depth on my Toyota 4Runner. It's pretty easy just the, the way the engine is set up and you can follow it from uh, air filter all the way to air intake manifold and I'll be explaining it. And then I'll basically be looking at my BMW and Chevy as a quiz. So I'll show pictures of those and hopefully you can point these systems out and then go look at your own car and find these four systems or these four components on your own car. So let's get started. So the first component of the air intake system is the air filter. The air filter most of the time is going to be located in a little plastic box like this. Uh, there's uh, hooks or hinges or some type of mechanism to keep the air filter inside and you can easily change it. After the air filter we have this tube here at least on this make and model of car. It's part of the EVAP system which I'll explain that in the video in the description. Here we have the mass airflow sensor, the MAF sensor, which is one of the main components of the air intake system. So here I took it off, and you'll get to see an uh, inside look, and basically that little uh, piece hanging off right there, that detects how much air is flowing by, and then the engine is able to inject a certain amount of fuel to get a, a good air to fuel ratio. This little cable here is the cruise control cable. You see this box here where my thumb and fingers are touching and you have this tube in the middle. Well the tube allows the air to continue on into the engine and then this box right here where my fingers are touching it dampens the sound of the engine and they call it the resonator. Now this is, an, is not on all vehicles but it is on this vehicle. Continuing on we have this little tube right here part of the PCV system. Next up we have the third main component of the air intake system and that's the throttle body. The air continues past the throttle body into the fourth major component, the air intake manifold. That's this gray plated metal looking housing right here with the six tubes coming off. Here you have a little tube coming off the side of the upper intake. That's part of the EVAP system. Next you have these two little lines right here. That's part of your throttle system. You have a couple more tubes coming off your intake plenum and your throttle body. Those are part of the EVAP and PCV systems. You see the airflow or the air path. It goes the top, curves around, comes out the bottom, goes left and right into the engine. And that's basically the end of your air intake system. So we zoom in right here. You see you have an upper part and a lower part of your air intake, at least for this car make and model. You have this little gasket right here. If there's any leaks in your system, it's probably going to be your gasket. So here, the throttle body, we're going to focus on this. You have the cables right here that when you press the gas, this little mechanism moves and it opens up this plate inside the throttle body and allows air to pass through into the air intake manifold. So here is a closer look at the throttle body. This little component down here is the idle air control valve. It allows air to pass through this plate when you're sitting at idle at a stop sign or a red light. and air is allowed to go into the engine and your engine does not stall out because this plate is closed obviously when you're in idle and you're not pressing the gas. Right next to the IAC valve you have these two little tubes coming out. That's part of the radiator system that allows cooling fluid to pass through. Right here you have another regulator part of the EVAP system which we'll talk about later. Another important part of the throttle body is the throttle body position sensor. That's over there on the left. So again, here's the throttle body cables. You see this plate opening up. When you press your gas pedal, it opens this plate up and the air is allowed to go into the engine and your car moves. So pretty easy, right? So we're going to switch vehicles on you and this is going to be a pop quiz for you. This is my BMW and I'm going to pause it right here. 
Do you think you can point out the four major components of the air intake system? Do you remember what they are? First comes the air filter, then the mass air flow sensor, throttle body, and the air intake manifold. So I'm going to circle them here for you. Well, there they are. Did you get them? If not, that's okay. You can always go back and rewatch the video and refresh your memory. We're going to switch over here to my 1997 Chevy Lumina. And here we are. So, hopefully you can immediately point out the air filter box. You can see that pretty large black looking plastic box right there on the bottom right. We're going to circle around here. Hopefully most of it's pretty intuitive by now. Maybe you've opened up your own car and found your own air intake system. We're going to pause right here. Hopefully by now you know the four major components of the air intake system. The air filter, mass airflow sensor, throttle body, and the air intake manifold. So we're going to, again, like we did with the BMW, we're going to circle those four major components. Do you think you can pick them out before I do that? Well, there they are. Did you get them? If not, that's okay. You can always go back and review. Now I'd like to take a couple minutes just to discuss maybe some of the scams with this system where car repair mechanics might try to get a little bit more money out of you on some of the things that might go wrong. So first we have the air filter. Now the air filter, I've seen air filters go anywhere between 10 and $30. You don't need to spend any more than $50 and I haven't even th seen anything over 30 So, And don't ever charge somebody to or don't ever have somebody charge you to change your air filter. You saw how easy it was. You can just go down to your local auto shop like AutoZone, Advanced Auto Parts, and, and uh, get your own air filter. Make sure you know the make and model of your car. Next up, we have the mass airflow sensor. Now, the mass airflow sensor can be tricky, and I've seen uh, some scams uh, with this component. So if you have a service engine soon code or uh, some type of service code, and you know it's the mass airflow sensor, you've been told it's the mass airflow sensor, first clean it and let me tell you that the cleaner for this is a $15 bottle, $15 bottle can. Now you don't need to be charged $100 to clean this, you can clean it yourself within 15 minutes and get your own can for $15. Or you can have somebody who knows what they're doing but don't have them charge you $100 to clean it. Sometimes the code is as easy as hooking the little, the little electrical component up and all that takes is about five seconds you just need to know what you're looking at and I would say now you do since you've seen it on three different systems so and if on the off chance that your mass airflow sensor is actually bad which I don't see why it should get bad I have a couple cars over 200,000 miles and I haven't changed the mass airflow sensor they can run about $50 to $150 don't have someone tell you that they're going to put a $200 mass airflow sensor on your car, which probably isn't necessary. All you got to do is clean it and make sure you take care of your car. Don't be a, a lead foot. Make sure your air filter is there. It's there to protect your mass airflow sensor. So next up we have the throttle body. Now this, I, I have not really heard of any throttle body that's bad or that you have to replace. Most of these will last the life of the car and you don't have to replace them. But I have seen new throttle bodies cost anywhere between three and six hundred dollars. So, and there's a lot of components that could also go wrong with a throttle body, like we saw before. The idle air control uh, valve that could go wrong. The throttle position sensor could go bad. You have the two radiator tubes that could come loose. So just make sure you check all those things. Get a, a code reader. Go to AutoZone. They can read the codes for you. And now that you know, you can maybe check some of these parts up on Google and, and see how much they cost for your car so you don't have to, so you don't get ripped off when someone tells you it's three hundred dollars for a simple part that could cost maybe twenty dollars and last but not least we have the air intake manifold now the, the only thing that really goes wrong with this is the gasket where if the gasket is leaking it allows air to come into the system which is not read by the mass airflow sensor so it throws off the air to fuel ratio so repairing one of these gaskets you can do do it yourself if you know what you're doing or if you take it to a place most of the the cost is probably the labor because it's pretty labor intensive it'll probably take about an hour or two to do it and uh, the part isn't that expensive though it shouldn't cost anywhere any more than fifty dollars maybe some cars fifty to a hundred dollars depending on the air intake manifold setup so 
hopefully this video helped you guys out if it did share it and subscribe so you can continue on with the series all the links will be in the description thanks for watching